Welcome to this instructional video for the Dave Smith Instruments Profit 12 Editor from SoundTower. The SoundTower Editor for the Profit 12 is a powerful companion to this dynamic synth. Working in complete harmony with the hardware controls on the Profit 12, the editor provides an alternative way to control the creation and saving of your original programs. Additionally, the editor provides a number of features not available directly on the Profit 12 that will enhance your user experience. It's not the intention of this video to explore every individual parameter of the Profit 12, nor to be a definitive tutorial on sound creation and development. Please refer to your user's manual to gain a clear understanding of the many parameters and controls available on the Profit 12. So let's get started. Before we can use any of the editor functions, we have to confirm that the Profit 12 editor is communicating with the computer. There's a separate video covering the details of this setup. Please see the Profit 12 video, MIDI, Global Settings, and MIDI Communication. To quickly review, select MIDI, then MIDI Setup. Be sure the Profit 12 is selected in the MIDI In port and the MIDI Out port, and the Profit should appear online. If this isn't the case, please refer to the full video on MIDI Setup to be sure the Profit 12 has been configured correctly. We'll take a look at all the menu items in the editor later, but let's set up one user preference now. Under the Profit 12 menu, you have Preferences and About. In the Preferences, you can manage how the editor responds to user actions. Mouse wheel value adjustments sets whether you scroll up or scroll down to increase number values. Knob value adjustments sets how you adjust the knobs on the editor. When you set to circular motion, you adjust the knobs by clicking on or near the parameter you want to adjust and move the cursor in a circular motion. If you want to make finer adjustments, you can click and move further away to track a larger circle, thereby giving you greater control. Change the setting to linear, vertical motion. You can click and move up and down vertically to adjust the value. Change the setting to linear, vertical, horizontal you can click and drag either vertically or horizontally to adjust the value. About provides a way to check the software version and view the credits of the program developers. Click on the OK button to close. When the Profit 12 editor first opens, you're presented with this view. Before you begin your editing session, we suggest that you first sync the editor with the current state of the Profit 12. Under the MIDI menu, select Receive Banks, then select All User Banks. A dialog will appear, and then click Start. All the current user banks in the Profit 12 will be downloaded to the editor. At the top left corner of the editor page, you have the panel representing the OLED screen on the Profit 12 that displays the name of the current program. If you click on the name of the program in this window, you are presented with a dialog that will allow you to change the name of the program and change the category of the program. More on categories in a moment. To the right of this display, you have mode switches and a keyboard graphic. When none of the switches are pressed, the Profit 12 is in normal mode. The Profit 12 plays one sound with 12 available simultaneous voices. When the A plus B switch is pressed, you are in stack mode, and you now have a single sound with double the oscillators, filters, envelopes, and other controls for more complex sounds. In this mode, you have six available simultaneous voices. When the next AB switch is pressed, you are in split mode. In this mode, the A parameters controls the sound that is played below the split point, and the B parameters control the sound played above the split point. To adjust the split point, click on the keyboard graphic. A larger keyboard appears, and you can click on any note you wish to define the split point. The note you click on will be the first available note on the upper or B voice. Next, you have a navigation bar. 
that allows you quick access to all the various groups of related controls and other features. If you expand the default window size, you will have access to a scroll bar and buttons that provide an additional way to move across the editor panels from the oscillators page all the way to the arpeggiator page. Sliding or clicking all the way to the right returns you back to the oscillator page with the additional feature of displaying the sliders plus a great XY pad not available on the Profit 12 hardware. Starting with Banks, here you have a complete listing of all the programs in the Profit 12. There are four user banks and four factory banks. You can select any of the available banks and click on any of the programs to recall that program in the Profit 12. If you right click on any of the program names in Bank View, you can copy the selected program to the clipboard, paste a program to this location from the clipboard, rename the program, and set category. Save the program to your hard drive, or load a program to this location from your hard drive, or you can initialize the program to a generic sound to create a new program from scratch. You can also view the Profit 12 programs by category. Here again, you can call up any of the individual user or factory banks, but you can also call up programs based on the type of sound that it is. Keys, strings, various types of bass sounds, brass programs, and so on. Additionally, you can also identify the sounds that contain an arpeggiator or you can call up sounds based on their status as normal, split, or stack program. Playlist is a very cool feature that allows you to collect and organize programs from any of the user or factory banks and prepare them for live performance so you can just click through the sounds you need in order. Select any of the banks by user, factory, or category, click on the program you need, select a list, Highlight a slot you want to transfer the program to, then click Insert Current. Once you've collected the programs you need, you can adjust their order by selecting the program and clicking the up and down buttons to change their position. When you're finished, click Send to upload the playlist to the Profit 12. We'll cover the Librarian and Phantom features later. You will notice that the program names in the Banks window indicate the program location, the program name, the sound category, whether the program is normal, a stack, or a split, and if the program has an arpeggiator attached to it. Very convenient. Next we'll have a look at the oscillators page. Here we can see there are four oscillators for the A and B groups. This is very handy having all the oscillators displayed at the same time, especially if you are developing a stacked sound and controlling all oscillators at once. This is much more convenient than having to select the oscillator from the front panel of the Prophet 12 before making any adjustment. You will notice a small downward arrow at the corner of the oscillator page and on other control panels of the editor. Clicking on this arrow will reveal a few options. You can copy the oscillator settings to the clipboard, or paste oscillator settings from the clipboard. Sync layer parameters connects to two layers of all the parameters in the editor. This will allow you to make adjustments on one layer and the other layer will follow. Click on the sync layer parameters again if you wish to edit the layers independently. The character controls allow you to quickly add attitude to your sound. The next page gives access to the low pass filter, high pass filter, and voltage controlled amplifier parameters. You'll notice that the editor provides an additional delay segment to the ADSR found on the front panel of the Prophet 12. You can adjust the ADSR segments with the on-screen knobs, or you can click and drag the segments in the display window. Also displayed here are the high-pass filter and distortion controls. Next are the feedback and delay controls, and you'll notice in the delay section you have access to a pan control not found on the hardware panel of the Prophet 12 for each of the delays. Next are the LFO and Unison panels. Displaying the LFO parameters in this fashion allows you to quickly set the values and destinations for each of the four LFOs that can be tempo synced or set to independent frequencies. 
Envelope 4 and Envelope 5 have the additional delay segment parameter available on the editor, a graphic display of the envelope shape, and destination routing. The modulation page provides a quick and convenient way to set source and destination paths as well as the amount each destination will be modulated. The arpeggiator page provides a powerful way to customize patterns to be played by the Prophet 12. Under the Parameters menu, all the Prophet 12 editor panels can be called from here as well. There are keyboard shortcuts provided for your convenience in navigating through the editor. For many users, being able to grab hardware controls for some functions may be better for certain tasks. Other functions in your workflow will be significantly easier using the editor. When you do make adjustments on the front panel of the Prophet 12, the software responds to hardware input. Use whatever combinations of hardware and software control best supports your style. Let's run through some of the features of these pages in a more detailed way while editing a program in the Prophet 12. Okay, let's take a sound that we really don't need here. I think we can do without that one. And initialize it. And turn it into just a normal single sound. Let's go out to the filter first here. And just make a few adjustments. And we'll go back to the oscillators here and uh, open another one. Do a little standard detune on this one. Let's add another sawtooth oscillator here and send it up the uh, fifth. Turn it up a little bit. And we'll do one more sawtooth uh, down the octave. this uh, slot feature on. This is great because it just, uh, each note just goes a little out of tune. I'd like to add another little detail here. We'll put this in stack mode and go out on the B level and we'll take this and make a real short envelope. And we're going to take this, go up an octave and a fifth. Turn this into a sine wave. And we'll put a little bit of meat on this. That gives us kind of a Hammond uh, percussion. We can change the timbre a little bit. And there we go. A quick note here, edits you make will not be saved to the program automatically. Edits are performed in a buffer that will not be saved unless you execute the right program command under the edit menu. Selecting this will open a dialog where you can decide what program you will overwrite. Okay, that's it for this quick overview of the main panels of the SoundTower Prophet 12 editor. Please take a look at the other videos that cover other features of this handy tool to get inside the Dave Smith Instruments Prophet 12. It's so easy.